welcome back. It's a new day, I've shaved, changed of clothes, the sun's shining at least some of the time. Uh, let's crack on with the Sawyer's bench. Now yesterday I spent about uh, 20 minutes, 30 minutes with power tools and just about an hour with hand tools. Today is going to be mostly hand tools, although I will be using, as, as long as I get to it, um, a drill and a lathe. Now, yesterday we uh, rough milled the, the lumber down to sort of component sizes and actually ended up uh, finished planing them, but I haven't done any of the joints yet or anything like that. Uh, the legs, unfortunately, are a little shorter. Um, I couldn't get enough material out of the, the pieces I had. So that's changed in my mind at least what the design is going to be like. I still want to cant over three of the legs. Um, I'll try and put a picture up here or there just to give you an idea of what, what I mean. So that'll be the first task to get the legs sorted out. Anyway, I shall voice over again today like I did yesterday. I'll include all the footage as long as I remember to press record and I'll keep the stopwatch going. So, enjoy. In order to get the legs to um, camp out, or in other words, splay, I need to uh, mark some angled lines around the bottom of them. Obviously, you want, if this canting in one direction, one of the lines is going to be square, like this one here. But then uh, the other one, I use the bevel gauge and mark that off at an angle. And when they're all done, I can take a handsaw and cut them off. Now I set the stopwatch correct after the couple of mistakes I made yesterday, um, but I've immediately made another mistake, so there's another three minutes, two seconds to add on to this. Thank <laughs> you. 
see quite clearly here that there's still plenty of holes for me to fill in in the legs after I've built the thing but hey that will give it a little bit of character so hopefully this gives you a bit of a better idea now uh, this is going to be the the back of the bench so we've got two legs the, the um, side that you saw from if you're well right-handed as I am is this side which is straight up and the other one is canted back a bit I think you can see that can if I bring them together so that's the that's at the um, the back of the bench at the front of the bench got two legs here again they're canted at the same angle the, the, this one's straight up the back one's canted out but you'll also notice that they're canted forward as well. It'll make a lot more sense probably on the, uh, the SketchUp model. So that's the legs done. Um, obviously you need to cut the joints on those. And uh, I want to mark out for the... Can you tell how well this was planned? for the stretches. So if I pick my legs that are going to be at the front, that's the simplest one to start with. That's at the front, that's at the top, that's at the bottom. I'll do it your way around actually. So that's the back leg face of it. The front leg is uh, this one, count it out forwards. I do hope that's right. Yeah, and let's just hold that up with that one there. And we want this one to be about the same height for marking out, so let's stick it on there. Very lucky. Now our top is 27 inches I managed to get. And the back legs near the back of the top. Now the front legs I want to leave about uh, just over the same distance that the, the width of each of these boards is away from the top so if that makes sense again so approximately that distance like so okay I'll just check that everything's square So you can't check this one, but it should match the bevel gauge. No, it shouldn't. There's a different bevel on the on that cant. That's right. And that was. I'm not sure why I chose to do two different angles on the legs, but uh, for the model, I've just used a single angle of seven degrees in both directions. So that should make it a lot easier. I do like these angle finders but they're so sensitive 
and you feel you've got to get it spot on every time. Amazing how easy it is to uh, completely forget you're doing something against the clock. I seem to be wasting an awful lot of time here. Stretcher in and start with the, the shorter one. And where shall I put it? Reasonably near the base. And in fact, I can, I could cover up that little nail hole there. So why don't I do that? Um, set it in. It's about an inch up from the bottom. So now I want to mark for the, the length, neither of these ends are great, in fact I ought to go the other way to be honest. Let's use the, uh, I believe this is a, an inch, let's move that along a little bit. Okay, and then we'll mark for these cuts. Pencil leads run out. So here I'm just uh, knifing in those lines and uh, Transferring them round to the other side, and then I'll uh, mark for the shoulders. And to do the shoulders, I just use a pair of dividers to uh, set the same distance at each end. I can keep that for later on, but actually I'll use a marking gauge probably on the other one, set it to the same distance. Now although the opposite legs are going to be uh, splayed out, the um, actual stretcher can be laid out exactly the same way, it'll just be canted over by the, the same angle when it's installed. So I'm just copying across now all the marking out. I was just explaining at this point that I'm going to leave the ends of the tails on and they can be uh, flushed off once the joint's been fitted. Now because the parts are dimensioned accurately it means that although I shouldn't I can use the non-face edge for some of my marking out. started a bit of a debate with myself as to whether or not it would be a bit boring for you to watch uh, me marking out all of these dovetails uh, and, and basically all of the speeded up video. 
Um, <laughs> you'll have to let me know whether it's a format you don't like. Uh, I also thought, well, whilst I'm speeding things up, maybe I should put some music on it to, uh, to entertain you. And then I remembered half of you love it and half of you hate it. So it makes it a little bit tricky. I think we're there. I think we can we can saw those after a cup of coffee though. And a quick time check. We're up to one hour forty minutes of unplugged. Oops, I uh, I forgot to press record. So uh, you haven't seen me cut that one. Uh, I've got three more to go though. Thankfully, I did turn the stopwatch back on. already you certainly will by the end of this video that uh, I like my Japanese saws don't always use them I do use Western saws as well but uh, some instances I just find Japanese saws are, are much easier and uh, actually coming up quite soon on the channel is going to be a discussion of uh, some of the various Japanese saws and uh, where I like to use them in preference to the Western ones and uh, possibly a review of some Japanese saws so look out for that you might also notice that uh, all the chisels I use are western chisels and uh, that's only because I've never never used Japanese chisels I used one that was uh, 1.5 mil wide uh, but that's it I've got uh, pretty much full complement of western chisels now for the sort of work I do so I can't justify uh, buying any Japanese chisels. shoulder started there get that little shoulder started it makes it uh, so much easier then to, to follow the follow the angle of the cut I don't think you can see that can you with that shoulder started up here Oops, down there. With that shoulder started, when I put it vertically in the vise, it's much easier then to uh, to start the saw going down the line. Thank <laughs> you. 
Well, it's always worth having a chisel at hand just to get rid of the little bit of waste in the corner that's usually left when you cut the sewer joint. call my coffee. I think that was me just getting a bit overexcited at having reached the last one. bad enough for this installment we'll carry on with the joints next time don't forget there's a, a model of the bench on my website to download and I will be adding a cutting list and dimension drawings fantastic thanks for watching and if you'd like to see more videos like this please consider supporting me on patreon cheerio